we just enter into the month of February, and often when the month of February comes around, the month of February is usually the month of what? The month of what? Okay, the month of love, right? <laughs> it's usually discussed as the month of love. And today, inshallah, I want to do a two-part series, inshallah. Today, I want to cover for the first part. Next week, inshallah, on Saturday, we'll cover the second part. When we talk about love, of course, there is, in the Quran, we find different words for love. But there is two different kinds of love that we often discuss. One is hub. Hub is you love something. Something exists in front of you. You love it very much. After a while, that love deteriorates slowly and gradually. You bought a new car, for example. You take care of it. You wax it. You, you, know, you make sure that your kids don't eat in it. You take really good care of it. Slowly and gradually, a dink here, a scratch there, a you know, small you know, damage to the car here and there. And what happens is that the love begins to deteriorate. You have something that is really nice. You moved into a new house or even you move to another house and you take care of it and, you, and so forth. But after a while, you know, there are small, small issues that appear in the house and your heart that was so much invested into the house is no longer there what it was before. Hope is something that you find outside, something that you do not really put so much of your time into. And even if you see it deteriorate, you let it go slowly and gradually. But then there's another kind of love that is mentioned in the Quran. And that is called Waddun. Okay? Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al-Wadud. What does Al-Wadud mean? It means an affectionate type of love. It's a type of love that sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knowing within his own infinite wisdom what is right and what is wrong, what's good and what's bad for a person. A person says, Ya Allah, give me such and such. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, due to his affectionate love for us, and true in sincerity, he is al-wadud. So he does have that love for everyone. He knows within his own infinite wisdom that if I give this person what he wants or what she wants, then this may not be good for them. This is what they want. But it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who says no, not because he doesn't want to give to us, but perhaps because of his affection and love, that perhaps if I give it to him, he may become ungrateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And by the way, I will say this, that there are two types of relationships. There's only two types of relationships that when we talk about affectionate love, Allah has used this word. One is our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because what dun, or the word, the, what, the word what dun, also used in the Quran, comes the word al-wadud. And it is a type of love that you have to invest into it. You have to take time out, and you have to truly work on it. And yes, there's going to be bumps, and there's going to be, you know, sometimes there will be issues, and there will be challenges along the way. But a person who has affectionate love with something, there's nothing that will stop a person from keep on pushing forward for that love. That first love is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the other love that is mentioned in the Quran, that is so important, and especially in our day and age, in our day and age, that is the love between a husband and a wife. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what does he say in the Quran? وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ What comes after that? Mawadda. The word mawadda also comes from the word al-wadud. If a husband and wife, they truly love each other, and yes, there will be challenges, but if we truly work on our marriage, and we give time to each other, and I'm not speaking only to the husbands here, this applies to both the husbands and the wives, that if we do our job properly, then wallahi, we will eliminate majority of the issues today. I'll tell you honestly, majority of my 80% of my counseling is due to family crises. 80% of my counseling is due to crises. When you talk to other people and you find out what's going on within families, because husband and wife don't work upon each other, and when you have even this whole you know, wave of feminism and so forth too, the true honesty is 
that husbands are not doing their job properly and the wives are not doing their job properly either. If a husband and wife, according to the Quran and the Sunnah, if we actually fulfilled our responsibilities and we fulfilled our roles is important. We fulfill our roles and we stick within our lane. Wallahi, things will run smooth. Think about it for a moment on the road here. If every single car was crossing off each other, they were cutting each other off in the lanes, there will be collisions and there will be crashes. But if every single car stayed within their lane and they fulfilled the, they fulfilled the rules and they obeyed the rules, you, you won't have any collisions. Likewise in a marriage, if a husband and a wife understand their roles and responsibilities and they stay within their lane, you won't have issues today. But I'll be honest with you when I say this, that it is so sad. The infidelity that is happening today in our marriages. The infidelity, you think that this is a problem of the outside. No, this is a problem today within our community. And there's so much more issues that I do not want to stand here in front of the community to talk about. Because your, your minds will be blown away. But the issues that we have. So that is why, brothers and sisters, these are two relationships. These are two relationships that we will be destroyed without. Number one is our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why Allah says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ سَيَجَعَلُوا لَهُمُ الرَّحْمَنُ وُدًّا Allah mentions the word wudan here, that those who are righteous and they do righteous deeds, they have iman and they back it up. And they affirm it with amal salih sayyaja'alu lahum ar-rahman wuddan. There's a type of love that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant them. And that same kind of love, the word mawadda has been used in a marriage. Because today in our marriages, if we don't find happiness in our marriages, and we're going out other places, and we're trying to find that happiness, then eventually for the most part, we will eventually fall into haram. And today inshallah, I want to continue with this, that there are three things today that I want to sh quickly share with you all that is something very important for all of us that we can do in our marriages that will bring happiness in our marriages. And this is based off the book of Gary Chapman, The Five La Love Languages, or The Five Languages of Love. He's, he wrote this book a long time ago. Of course, he's one, you know, one of the best sellers when it comes to marriage and so forth. But he has mentioned five things in his book. And inshallah, I have decided to add one more element to that so to make it six. But today, inshallah, I'll cover three of them. Next week, inshallah, I'll cover three of them. The very first thing is, which is very important, what we learn from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, not from him. This is something that he has mentioned. But we find examples of this in the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that is when it comes to each other for spouses, it is important that they provide words of affirmation. What does that mean? It means to say something positive. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was a man who not, did not just not speak positively about someone on their face. He would, at times, he would praise his own spouses right in front of them. And by the way, there's a person by the name of Mark Twain. He says that a good word can help me get going and it can last me for two months. How many times when we get called into our in the office and our boss calls, in, calls us into his office or our supervisor and he says, you know what, I've been noticing your work, you're doing a fantastic job. When he says that you are doing a fantastic job, we value your work, wallahi, it feels so great. It feels so good because you know you've put so much hard work into it. And now they're backing it up and they're saying, and they're giving you words of affirmation that can last you a whole long. And that is why in our deen, there's a concept of appreciating each other. There's a concept of thanking each other. When someone does something good for you, you thank them. But when it comes to our spouse, even more importantly, Husband and wife should, should provide words of affirmation. They should say words of encouragement. We often only speak up when we need to be critical of each other, when we need to criticize each other. But what we learn from Rasulullah is that number one, he would speak positively about them right in front of them. But at the same time, behind their backs also, he would speak positively about them. We often speak good in front of someone else right in front of them, but we speak ill about those same people behind their backs Rasulullah would speak positively about his wives even behind their backs 
When he was asked who is the most beloved to you, Aisha is not there, but he says the most beloved to me is Aisha radiallahu anha. When we're talking about someone who passed away, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is acknowledging Khadija radiallahu anha that there was no one who gave me that support the way Khadija gave me that support. Because all the other wives, they came after Islam had begun to flourish. Islam had become established. But it was Khadija who went through the difficult challenges, who consoled the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that Ya Rasulullah, don't worry, Allah will not abandon you. Allah will not do this to you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not just leave you and completely leave you hanging. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He will take care of you. Look at you. Look at your personality. Look at your akhlaq. Look at, look at your character and your demeanor. This is not the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will treat you. This was something that was said by Khadija radiallahu anha. Years after Khadija has already passed away, yet Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he's providing words of affirmation. Even when a time when, Khadi, when Aisha radiallahu anha, our mother, when she was going through the difficult time in her life, when she was slandered and accused of wrongdoings, even during that time, think about it. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he does not have, you know, he does not have knowledge of the unseen. He has no idea what has happened. What he sees in front of him is what he's going off, uh, going off on at that time. And at that time, even when he's asked, what do you know of Aisha radiallahu anha, our mother, our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, even at that time, in a, in a critical time, he says that I do not know anything of but khair from our mother Aisha radiallahu anha. Think about how difficult that time was for Aisha radiallahu anha. And when you provide words of affirmation and you are there to verbally support your spouse, then that is what goes a long, goes a long way. When a, hus- when a wife knows that her husband is about to lose his job and he's going through this mental anxiety over and over again, Instead of their being critical of him, that you do not do this, you do not do that. Rather, a wife should also be thankful to her husband. Rather, a wife should always provide words of encouragement. This is something that is extremely important. And this also means that we also should praise each other. A husband should praise his wife that the good things that she has done. Yes, there's always weaknesses in all of us. In all of us. There's weakness in all of us. No one is perfect. But there are some good things that they have done. Praise them for that. And a wife should praise her husband for the hard work that he does. And yes, even the husbands will have some weaknesses, but they should provide words of affirmation because this is something that's very important. And subhanAllah, when you talk about even abuse in general, when you talk about abuse in general, there is that kind of abuse which is physical abuse. That physical abuse is apparent. It's visible. People can see it. There's a bruise here. That bruise will vanish after probably after two, three months. But when you say something to someone and you create a scar on their heart and you tear them inside internally, they cannot, a lot of times, they cannot heal from that. They cannot heal from that. How many times children, even sometimes even amongst us here, someone must have said something to us a long time ago. One is physical abuse. That we can, a lot of times we can get over that. Even in some, many cases we're not able to get over that. But if you compare physical to verbal, you'll find often that people, they live and they hold on to the verbal abuse. Because what comes from the tongue is so sharp at times. And when we don't use this tongue properly, especially when it comes to our families, it can destroy our families. So the very first thing is that we learn is, the most important, one of the most important things is when it comes to this language of love, is that we always provide words of affirmation. The second thing that is very important is that we always provide quality time to our families. You know, everyone says the same thing. I am busy, I am busy, I am busy, I am busy. And there are ways to overcome our busy schedules. And I've explained this before. It's not rocket science. You just have to schedule out your day. You have work, you have work, I understand. But then there are some times of the day that you need to give to each other. A husband needs to say that, okay, you know what? If this is, I have like, for example, I have five things to do. But if you can take out one time of the day and during that time you don't do anything else but you give your family time, I tell you honestly, brothers, 
Because a lot of times, brothers, they tell me that my wife is never happy. My family is never happy. But I tell you honestly, that if you give them undivided attention, even if it's only for half an hour or 45 minutes, will lie, they will be happy. It's not about the quantity of time. It's the quality of time that they are usually complaining about. This also goes for the wives, that they need to give time to their husbands also. And they need to give undivided attention to their husband. So when a husband and wife, they give undivided attention to each other, and they talk to each other, they share each other's challenges with each other. Go through, I often say this, husband and wife, they should sit down with each other and talk about what's going on with the kids. Not when they have their phones. Not when they have their phones at night, they should put away their phones, talk to each other. How was your day? How was my day? My challenges, your challenges. Be a support for each other. This is important, but we don't do this. Even when we're going and we're walking with each other in the park, for example, we have our phone with us. When we're sitting with our families, we have our phone with us. Once again, it's not about the amount of time we're giving. It's the quality of time that we're not giving to our families. And that is what is killing our families. This is what's killing our relationships. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to be with his families. People would come. People would come. And they would say, I want your time. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would say, no, Rasulullah sallam is with his family. وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ صَبَرُوا حَتَّى تَخْرُجَ إِلَيْهِمْ لَكَانَ خَيْرَ لَهُمْ Why don't you stay outside and be patient? Why don't you stay outside and be patient and you wait for Rasulullah to come outside? When the Prophet ﷺ is done with his family and he comes out, then you can address, then you can uh, present your uh, matter to the Prophet ﷺ and he will address it. But you do not have a right to stand there outside of the house of the Prophet ﷺ and call out Rasulullah ﷺ just because he is the Prophet of Allah ﷺ. And that means that no matter how important our work is, no matter how important our work is, sometimes you just, when you see the call, you have to just send it to voicemail. Do that. Make a habit of always, unless it's an absolute urgent, dire situation, I understand. But if it's not urgent and dire, and it can wait, then just send it to voicemail. Because at that time, when you, imagine there is a situation, imagine there is a momentum being built up, you're sitting with your family, you take one phone call, or you sit down with your phone, that entire momentum is gone. So the second thing that we learn from our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also, is the importance of quality time. And finally, the last thing for today is, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says in a hadith, tahadu tahabu, exchange gifts. I tell you, you know, to be honest, it, is not even, it doesn't even have to be a very expensive or elaborate gift. I understand that there are times when people are very high maintenance. You understand? But we have to understand our situation. We all know our situation in our families. But even if you provide a small gesture here and there, provide a small gift here and there, well, like those things, they go a long way. They go a long way. And this is one of the things that he also, Gary Chapman mentions in his book also, giving gifts. But this is something, once again, we learn from our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that he would provide gifts. And once again, not extravagant. The Quran says very clearly to our, our mothers that if this is something that you want, if you want Allah and his Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then you will get Allah and his Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And if you want the glamours of this dunya, then you can separate yourself from the Prophet Sallallahu and release yourself from this marriage and you'll get the dunya. You'll get the dunya which you're wanting for. And they, of course, all the wives, they said that we want Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We want Allah and His Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this is what they chose. But at the same time, once again, we know our situations. Always learn how to give a gift. Always provide, you know. Once again, it doesn't have to be very extravagant. Even something small goes a long way. So be in the habit of giving small gifts here and there. Surprise each other when a time to time. And this will, inshallah, go a long way. There are three more things, inshallah. I'll mention them next week, inshallah. But these are three things today. I want you all to take, inshallah, apply them in your life. And once again, this is not only for the brothers, this is also for the sisters. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help, first of all, repair our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us improve our relationships in our families. Amin rabbil alameen. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. إن المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات والقانتين والقانتات والصادقين والصادقات والصابرين والصابرات والخاشعين والخاشعات 
والخاشعين والخاشعات والمتصدقين والمتصدقات والصائمين والصائمات والحافظين فروجهم والحافظات والذاكرين الله كثيرا والذاكرات أعد الله لهم مغفرة وأجرا عظيماً